passive reading, okay? Passive reading is fine for when you're just reading something for fun, okay? Uh, reading a novel, for example, is, you know, is, is something that you guys like to do. Uh, you know, if you're reading Hunger Games, I doubt sincerely, unless you're doing it for school, that you're sitting there taking notes and really thinking about what you're reading. You're just reading for fun, and that's fine, okay? Passive reading is fine most of the time. But for the I step, you're going to need to be active readers. And the word active means doing something. So you're going to need to be doing something when you read for I step, okay? And that's going to be active reading. Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Docs for annotation. Uh, we've been teaching our kids annotation to help them prepare for the I-STEP and to become better readers. Um, I always start by talking with my students about the difference between passive reading and active reading. And I really try to emphasize that active reading is the only thing that's acceptable for the I-STEP. And I encourage you to say the same thing to your students because if they're doing something during the I-STEP, uh, they're far more likely to remember what they've read and be able to apply it to questions and so forth. So I'm just gonna show you three ways in Google Docs that you can do some fun annotation. Adding comments into Google Docs is a lot like using post-it notes in real life, okay? Post-it notes, though, for one thing, they, they can lose their stickiness and then they fall out, and also it can be tough to keep yourself organized, okay? So making comments in Google Docs, it's, it's pretty easy. You just you, you highlight the thing you're making a comment about, you right-click on it, and then hit the word comment. Little box is going <laughs> to pop up, and when that little box pops up, you can write whatever you want in there, okay? The second way that we can actively read using Google Docs is by using what are called hyperlinks, okay? Now you did this with your timelines. I had you hyperlink to pictures. I had you hyperlink to extra information. A hyperlink takes you to a different web page, okay? And that different web page is going to be related to whatever word you chose to make a link. Uh, for example, on here, I put, let's just say you were doing a report on pelicans. Does anyone know what a pelican looks like? Can you picture it in your mind? Some of you can, most of you cannot, okay? So my example here, I, I hyperlink the word pelicans and it takes you to a picture of a pelican. Last, this is a student idea. I did not come up with this. A student did it randomly one day and I thought it was a brilliant way to com communicate what you're thinking while you're reading, okay? Uh, we were reading Animal Farm last year, and I don't want to give it away, but later on, one of the animals is going to betray another animal. So that person, when they were writing their little summary, they put hashtag lame. Now at first I thought, well, that's not appropriate for proper writing, but then I thought, well, maybe I should chill out because this is a pretty good idea. What that person was doing was communicating an emotion about how they felt about what they just read. And that's what we want you guys to be doing. We want you to be actively reading. I thought a few examples about hashtagging uh, w would be helpful because it's quite honestly something that I was not very familiar with until pretty recently. Uh, hashtagging is commonly used on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, things like Instagram. It's an easy way to group messages together. For example, if your uh, friends were talking about the Chicago Bulls, uh, you would put pound sign bulls. And then any message on Twitter that was like that one would be grouped together. Incidentally, uh, hashtagging is a great way to reflect on what you just wrote. A lot of people on Twitter and Facebook and places like that, they put these, just, these, these quick little two or three words to express a thought and emotion about what they just wrote. And that's, and that's perfect for active reading. So here are some examples that I came up with. Uh, it says, the girls basketball team won last night. Hashtag Bricky Pride. It's used to show an emotion. Uh, the second example, you could use it for uh, like certain literary elements like foreshadowing. It says the kids enjoyed the trip, or were enjoying the trip, but Molly wondered for how long. It's an example of foreshadowing, so you could put hashtag foreshadowing. This example says, like a hot knife through butter, we move quickly through the forest. And then I put a hashtag and uh, the word simile to show that this is a simile. And a like example, it was 20 degrees outside, my hands were ice. That's a metaphor, so I put hashtag metaphor. And then the last example I have, you could use it for certain themes or archetypes as you read. Gan Gandalf did his best to give Frodo advice for the long journey ahead. And that's an example of, of the classic archetype, the wise old man. Wise old men are commonly in stories, um, and it's something that you know students are probably familiar with. Mm -hmm.